Hey everybody, I'm making this video on the fly. I have not written a script or rehearsed, so hopefully I won't stutter or pause too many times. Uh, this is uh, On Target, the uh, TDS version of On Target, which is a program to uh, analyze your shot groups. So I'm just going to do an example here and hopefully do it justice in my demonstration. So I'm going to click on the open uh, image button here on the top left and that's going to bring up the most recently accessed uh, folder uh, and I've already done uh, these targets but I'm going to bring up one just to use as an example and uh, let's see we'll pick this one right here and I will go through marking these groups so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to click on the set reference button here on the top left. That will give me a tiny little ruler. Hopefully you'll be able to see it uh, here. It's kind of small and light, but I'm going to measure a known distance by clicking once, dragging it across and uh, to the next point and clicking it. And I know that this is a, a target with one inch grid. So the reference distance is one inch. I'm going to pop, uh, punch that in and hit OK. So now the program knows that the distance from, uh, from here to here across one square is one inch. The next thing uh, we're going to do is pick our target distance. This was 100 yards. I think it defaults to that. But you see this drop down menu on the right. Uh, a lot of common distances here, meters and yards and even feet. Uh, or you can enter your own custom uh, distance by clicking on the top where it says zero and then enter your own. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the 100 yards. The whole size is the next field below it. Uh, this target was shot with an AR-15 223 uh, ammunition, which actually happens to be .224 inches in diameter. If this was, say, 6.5 Creedmoor, I would pick the .264 uh, caliber size, but I'm going to go back and pick the uh, .224, which is the size of the bullet in the uh, AR-15 ammo. So we've set our distance, our reference distance, uh, uh, you know, on the target, and then we've uh, inputted our target distance and our hole size. So now we are ready to start marking up our groups. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. And uh, we've already got highlighted over here on the right. Group one has already started. Next thing we do is click on the input bullet holes button. And drop down. I'm going to click once. Notice my cursor changes to a, a hole. And that hole is sized according to uh, the caliber that we selected on the right. So I'm going to mark uh, this hole here. That's one. Click to change the cursor again, and then click again to set the next hole. Click, 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 click. That's five shots that I've marked. Next thing I'm going to do is click on the point of aim button here on the top left. Come down, click once, you'll see a, a crosshair show up. I'm going to center that over the bullseye or the point of aim as uh, the case may be. In this case, I aim dead center at the bullseye. And now I'm going to click that and that sets the point of aim. And you'll notice that uh, the holes have all been uh, highlighted, and uh, there is a text box here. Now, you can actually move this text box. Sometimes it uh, just overlaps uh, your bullet holes or targets. So you click on the upper left corner of that text box, and then place the cursor where you want it to appear, and click again, and it moves down. And you'll notice that uh, it, had, it was overlapping this bottom hole here, so I've moved it down some. So I'm going to move it again by clicking, and then you uh, you, you know, release the, the button, and then click again, and it moves it where you last clicked. So that's the first group. 
we're going to move on to the next group. We start a new group. We Two different ways we can do it. We can either click on this new button over here on the right, or we can click on the new group button on the top left on the menu uh, here. So I'm going to do that. And you'll notice over here on the right, group two appears and is highlighted in the groups box. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to scroll over a little bit actually to group number two over here and I'm going to click the input bullet holes. You'll notice the cursor uh, changes and I'm going to click once and mark one of my holes. I happen to know and I actually wrote on the uh, target that there were two bullets that went through this hole here and so I'm going to just kind of guesstimate where the second bullet impacted by uh, overlapping my holes here. So that's two holes. This one here I happen to know was three holes and you can kind of tell that there are, this is more than just one bullet right here. So I'm going to click at one edge of it here, click again at the other edge, and my last and fifth bullet hole right here in the middle. So there are my five shots. I'm going to click on the point of aim, click to make the crosshair appear, center it over the bullseye where I was aiming, click, and you see the text box with all the data popped up again. So I'm going to drag that down out of the way a little bit. Actually, not drag it, click it, and then release, and then click again, and then it moves. Now we can scroll down. We'll do one more group on this uh, target. I'm going to click the new group button, then the input bullet holes button. Click, click, click. Center it up, click, click, and then mark that one, click, and then mark that one, click, and mark that one. Click on our point of aim, click, and click. And now we've got our text box. I'm going to click on that and then reposition it here. All right, so uh, that's three out of the five groups on this target, but I think you get the idea of how to uh, mark up your, your groups. Uh, you'll notice some of the data appears over here on the right side. You can uh, uh, check uh, different display options uh, that you want to appear. There is also under the tools, there's options where you can uh, change up your drawing options, for example, the size and color of the, uh, of the bullet mark holes, the bullet holes, and also these boundaries, these other little, the little squares and circles that indicate the center of the group versus the center of, uh, of aim. Anyways, you can uh, set the color, for example, of those, and you can also set the uh, width of those. Down here, you'll see group text options. Uh, you can make the, the group text movable, which I have checked. That's when I was moving. You know, so you can move these to where you want them. I have it customized with the uh, group number, the distance, the maximum uh, spread, uh, the mean uh, radius, which is the average distance of the holes from the center of the group, uh, the offset horizontal and vertical, that tells you how far the center of the group is from the point of aim. And then you can check this box if you want to put uh, some notes uh, with your text box. So for example, uh, let's see if I can do that. I'm going to hit cancel here. I think I can hit notes and uh, type in blah blah here. And let's see if that, uh, let's see, click notes. There it is. I had to click this here. I'm still learning this a little bit as well. Uh, and down here you see where it says blah blah. Ah, there's another blah blah up here. I think that is uh, from uh, from the other section there. Anyways, let's see. 
Oh, next is uh, we want to save this. So let's uh, say we want to save this. I'm going to zoom back out. And you'll notice that the text boxes get bigger. I have found that the ideal size image to use in this program is about 800 pixels uh, wide or 800 pixels uh, high. So uh, I find that that just fits best and the text boxes appear more proportional and more visible when you look at the JPEG image that you've saved later. Uh, I found that if I zoom out to where it just fills this screen top to bottom, that gives me the best representation of what it's going to look like when it's saved as a JPEG. Uh, when you zoom it out like this, you may find that these text boxes are now obscuring something. So let's say I want to move Group 1's text box. I go over here, I click on Group 1, and then I click on the text box. You see the little T show up there. And I'm just going to move it a little bit to the left here and click there. If I want to move group two, text box, I click here, click on the box, move it over here, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you want to now save this image as a JPEG so you can post it on Facebook or your favorite gun forum and show off your amazing uh, groups, uh, click on File and save project as graphic. Click that. This pops up uh, where, you know, whichever folder you'll find where you want to save it and you can give it a name. I'm going to call it target, target example. All right, we'll just call it that and save it. Now, if you want to save this project so that you can later modify any of this stuff if you want, then you hit File, Save As, and then it saves it as a target graphics file. And so it's kind of like when you save a Photoshop project. You can still go back and edit it uh, if you want to. So you can save that. There are a lot of other more advanced features in this program. I'm not going to get into that, but I just thought I would show you guys uh, some of the basics. I hope that helps.